Hello, everyone. Uh, hope you're all well and safe from this pandemic situation. Uh, let us all wish this situation changes back and we get back to our normal soon. Uh, I'm Pravartika, who will be hosting this show. And uh, hello. Uh, hi, Anush. Anush Natravina hello. Chandran. Yeah, yeah. Uh, architect. Uh, he's a co-founder of uh, CCQ. Uh, he's done, he's an assistant professor in CIET, and he's also uh, IGBC AP. And uh, he's done his master's in urban management at uh, SEPT University, Ahmedabad. Uh, over to you, without any delay, we'll go to his thing. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, Architect Pravatika, ma'am. And happy thank evening you. to one and all uh, seeing this live video. Uh, warm welcome to all the BR aspirants, their parents, and also their friends, and uh, especially to the organizing team of MAM School of Architecture, Trichy, and to my dear colleagues from CCQB Academy, Coimbatore. So it is actually a very wonderful uh, initiative by MAM SOA, you know, uh, sort of to try creating an awareness uh, to the maximum number about architecture as a career. And uh, we are glad to collaborate uh, with this initiative that the burning questions answer. And uh, since it is a live webinar, anybody at any point of uh, your life or wherever you are, in whichever place you are from, you can access this uh, live streaming, which is actually a very novel initiative in the modern era, especially during tough times like this pandemic. And one another special occasion is today being the World Environment Day. We also feel privileged you know, for this event to have been organized on this auspicious day. And as architects, uh, we have additional responsibility to protect nature and uh, to create a better environment for the future generations to come. So uh, with this note and without any further delays, let's get into this session. And in the prevailing situation, uh, as you see in this slide, uh, so there is a quote by our former president, APJ Abdul Kalam. So creativity in education leads to evolution of self-reliant youth with knowledge and action. So in this current situation, uh, things have ch changed drastically. Uh, I hope you agree with me. And we have been into lots of new normals, uh, which are uh, becoming our mainstream uh, lifestyle and practice. So all the researchers uh, suggest that creativity will be an untangled component in the 21st century, uh, as rightly envisioned by our uh, former president. Uh, so the NATA 2021 format is also uh, suiting this quote. Uh, so it is designed uh, to you know equip students in the current situation in these challenging situations especially so this isn't a usual mainstream webinar so in the next one hour uh, you will be uh, exposed to some of the uncommon approaches on how to answer this burning question and is it really a burning question what do you mean by a burning question so all these things will be looking in the next one hour so uh, coming to the uh, actual presentation uh, we'll uh, introduce ourselves so uh, we are a CCQ Academy from Coimbatore and uh, we uh, have a comprehensive palette of coaching to crack all the competitive exams in the streams of architecture, design and fashion. And to move on to the structure for today's webinar, uh, what we'll be covering in the next one hour or what we intend to discuss. So here's the broad structure of the presentation. So in the first go, we are not directly getting into the questions. Rather, we'll be seeing the analysis of the first test, which was held on the 10th of April. Uh, so in that we'll be getting lots of insights of uh, what were the pattern, what were the questions that were asked, and what were the actual burning questions. So all these things we'll be covering up. Then moving on to the 2021 syllabus, uh, what is uh, given for this current year, the typology of questions, and then the main component, the tips and tricks how to crack NATA, especially the 2021 version and uh, about us and the questioner. So the floor will be open to all the viewers and you can throw random questions and we'll try to answer them. And before we get into the session, we need to understand, uh, you know, uh, as you already know, what is NATA? I'm just insisting on the crucial segments of the test. So as you broadly see the visual perception and aesthetical sensitivity, the cognitive skills, the critical thinking ability and the logical reasoning. So based on these four broad parameters, I have, uh, you know, oriented my uh, presentation so that you will be getting an idea of what will come under each of these headers. And this is, a, uh, I mean, uh, why I'm uh, placing this particular slide here is make you understand that for the very first time in the history of NATA, the drawing component was completely replaced in the last year owing to the pandemic. 
and in order to test uh, skill set and ability of the br aspirants these new parameters were included in the syllabus so which were actually not in the case of the previous years nata so this is again a broad typology of questions and i just detailed it out so now let's get into the session and at the time of referring each questions i will relate as to what component that particular question falls in so as i mentioned earlier uh, before we get into the questions let's quickly have an overview of the first test of nata 2021 and uh, these were the typologies of questions so the ptq naq msq so these are all components which were added in the previous year and uh, uh, earlier it was used to be a drawing test for 125 marks and the rest of the questions will be a online based aptitude test rather what happened in the last two years is completely an online test and this is the typology of questions based on our analysis in the nata first test so out of those uh, questions which were asked the mcqs were about 69% and the ptqs were of 6% the naqs were of 20% and msqs were of 5% so this is our analysis based on the first test so the second test probably might be in the same typology or it might vary in a you know matter of 5 to 6% uh, and based on the difficulty scale this is our analysis so based on the questions we have analyzed so the easy type of question so a beginner or a novice who is not at all familiar with what is a aptitude or what is a design or what is architecture so when a novice is approaching uh, the questions will be of 34% easy and the average or normal questions will be of 34% and the hard are an expert level of questions so it needs some meticulous study or preparation which is accounting to 17% and the burning questions which we actually you know uh, emphasized in this uh, presentation or the session uh, the title itself said the burning question so those burning questions are something which is harder than the hard so it is more than the difficult questions and little bit difficult to unlock the content on the very first go so these are our broad classifications and the bifurcation of questions based on the uh, syllabus so as i mentioned uh, we had lot of aptitude based questions and in this uh, bifurcation what i mean to say is uh, the none of the questions from max and physics were actually from the higher secondary syllabus so you need not panic on seeing the max and physics component the max and physics are very basic in nature so you need to just refresh your basics so don't get into the complex uh, level of uh, these two uh, subjects and there is no specific training required uh, to brush up these things it is just remembering or recollecting the basics of what you already learned or it is an innate ability what you already acquired so architecture is all about just connecting these dots which you already know or which you already learned in your primary school and similarly the architectural aptitude logical reasoning ability and these general awareness is all what you have already acquired the knowledge what you already acquired so on seeing the sample questions what i have aligned in the coming slides you will be getting an idea or understanding of what actually i mean in this particular slide so let's get into the syllabus of nata 2021 so it's uh, not actually an entrance exam so as we all misconceive nata is not at all an entrance exam rather it's an eligibility test so one must possess the basic skills from all the topics or subjects that i have listed here and it's not limited only to these specific areas but also in a multifaceted manner so uh, the knowledge in building material so as i mentioned building materials it is all very primitive so you know what is a brick what is a stone what is a cement so it is just a recollection of what you already know or the basic skills what you possess so here is a list uh, which we have prepared based on the syllabus so uh, it is just a exhaustive list based on this we have a lot of question types so in question types in this particular nata 2021 Uh, we need to understand that these are the four major categories or question typologies so one is the mcq which we are already familiar with the multiple choice the next three uh, new things that you might wonder so people who are uh, very first to this uh, presentation who are not familiar with what is nata this might sound new to you but uh, in order to uh, ease out uh, your uh, complications uh, the upcoming slides will elaborate what these different sectors are so as you see here Uh, we have uh, questions uh, totally of 125 questions and uh, 180 minutes is given so you need to be wise enough to manage your time accordingly so that you attempt all these 125 questions which has different marking schemes one mark two mark and three mark so i'll be explaining you what all things uh, will be under these three marking typologies and the marking pattern as you see here 75 questions uh, will be uh, from your one mark 
25 from your two mark and 25 from your three marks. So this is how the uh, first uh, test uh, also happened on this basis. And out of 200 marks, uh, so you'll be having 125 questions and 180 minutes. So this is what you need to have in mind. And this is the first typology of question, the MCQ. This is a very much a familiar question type. So four answer choices will be given out of it. You need to pick a correct answer. So here we get into the first question, a sample question, which we can discuss. This comes under the diagrammatic reasoning component. So here you'll be looking on the logical reasoning based on the diagrams or scenarios, which is given here. So in this question, as you see the given composition and there are four different answers. And uh, in the very first go, you can see that all are typical or similar. So uh, as uh, candidates, what you need to uh, do, how to crack this question is uh, immediately when you see there are a lot of shapes and colors which are involved in this particular question. So uh, you should see the identical shapes and colors which is given in this composition. So as you see, uh, the third uh, option is literally matching the composition which is given in terms of your shape or in terms of your color. So in the first question uh, or the first option, you can see that there is some uh, irrelevant option, the trapezoidal shape which you see at the top. And in the option B, there is only circle which is repeated rather there are no other shapes that are uh, seen. And in the case of option D, you can see a lot of squares, but there are other shapes also which are present in the given composition. So based on the color theory, the aesthetical sensitivity, what you learn and the shapes that you see in the uh, elements, principles and other things which are broadly classified under the aesthetical sensitivity component. So if you see in that terms, the identical thing uh, which you uh, can relate it with the given composition is the option C. So moving on to the next component is your again diagrammatic reasoning. But here you are referring to some diagrams and scenarios. So in the very first go, this might seem to be a little bit confusing, tricky or few people might say this is very easy. But the bottom line, what you need to understand is the group A consists of some set of uh, you know uh, figures uh, using some diagrammatic representations. And in the group B, there is again some different representations. And in the bottom, you have a image. So we need to uh, relate uh, which group is reflecting the uh, given composition. So most of the people, 90% of the people who attempt to answer this, they choose group A. Because uh, as soon as they see group B, uh, without applying any logic on the very first go, they might uh, tend to, you know, uh, carry it away with the easiness. But the actual thing what uh, candidates need to do is observe both these compositions or groups and then relate with the third composition, which is likely given at the bottom. So uh, the actual answer is actually it belongs to both the group. Why? Because in the uh, first group, as you see, it contains two shapes that complement each other. So if you join those two shapes, it will form a square. In the second group, the con it contains two different shapes, which are the mirror images. So uh, the group A, when you join two, it will become a square. And in the group B, it is a mirror image. So both of these groups are reflecting in the third composition. So the right answer is the figure belongs to both the group. So this is a way of how to uh, deal with the diagrammatic way of questioning based on some logic. So first you need to decode or decipher the logic which is placed behind these two different groups. So that's the way how to how you need to approach this particular question. And moving on to the next component, this comes under the inductive reasoning. So what you need to do is you see the patterns and analyze the given data. So as soon as you see in the top row, you have a set of uh, you know uh, shapes which follows a sequence. And in the second uh, sequence, there is a missing pattern or uh, you need to analyze based on the other patterns. So uh, there are like five options which are given to you out of which you need to pick the right sequence or right pattern which will uh, be uh, fitting in this particular sequence. So uh, what you can analyze uh, with the given data is it is actually moving. Uh, so the pattern what they have given and as you see the recurring patterns, it is actually moving in a direction. So ideally what needs to be there in the second position. So based on these five options, immediately you need to be aware that this is the uh, the fifth option, uh, which is crisscrossing. So as it moves sequentially, this is the right form that will fit in the second box. So this is based on a pattern you need to analyze. So while you analyze, you need to understand whether it is moving or in which direction or uh, whether uh, two shapes are moving or all the four shapes are moving. So these sort of things you need to analyze 
this is a inductive reasoning question and coming to the most commonly asked question which is a little bit tricky for the beginners or novices so this is a visualization and understanding of 3d object based questions so uh, there are different ways in which this question can be asked but what i have shown here is just a uh, 3d object and the question asked is uh, which view of the side elevation will be seen as uh, seen in the pointer arrow uh, on which it is pointed rather the other way of asking this question might also be uh, sometimes a side view will be given and then you will be asked in a inverse way uh, find the 3d object of this side view that is one way of asking and in the third way what they can also ask is a top view or a rear view might be asked and based on that uh, they'll be asking which is the top view of this object which is the rear view of this object so you need to understand about shapes views so all surfaces vertices so these sort of basic geometrical terms you need to understand so here they are just testing your visualization skills on how you understand about the 3d objects so this is a way of question uh, where people might tend to make mistakes though it is a easy question you need to spend at least 20 to 30 seconds of time to crack which way the arrow mark is pointing and based on those four options you need to wisely pick the right answer so in this case the right answer is option a so on the uh, arrow mark you find a very solid uh, surface then a void surface and then a triangular surface at the top so in th this way if you align the right answer what you can figure out is option a and this is the way how you need to approach based on the arrow mark and the three other typologies i already mentioned you moving on to the next question so this is the uh, logical and non verbal reasoning question which will be categorized under distance and direction so here as you see uh, there is a scenario where two people two friends are sitting in a lawn at the time of a sunrise so at the sunrise uh, so they are sitting back to back which means opposite directions and nandita's shadow fell exactly towards the left hand side so what does the direction of ravi uh, will uh, like appeal to be so which side he is facing as we already know they are sitting back to back and they have given the uh, position or direction of nandita what we need to find is which direction ravi is facing so in this type of questions how you need to crack is please mention or make note of a thumb rule to answer or to crack these sort of questions you need to understand the directions so directions we basically know what is north south west east and we also say that left hand side right hand side so we know what is what but in order to crack these sort of questions as a thumb rule or rule of thumb you need to understand that always whenever they say that you are facing someone or you are standing straight to the sun it is assumed that you are facing towards the north point always it is a thumb rule you are facing towards a north point and uh, as they have mentioned here it fell to the left hand side so when i say left hand side uh, whenever you are uh, facing the north hand side your left hand side uh, will be always your uh, west and right hand side will always be your east so if you understand this basic thumb rule in the question they have asked that what is the direction of ravi so as i mentioned if you are facing in the north and uh, your left hand side is the west and right hand side is the east similarly in this case the answer will be such that in a sunrise perspective nandita is uh, already in the north hand side and uh, she will be in the left so uh, ravi should be facing in the south direction so that you need to infer so this is the actual answer so if you see the next slide the answer is given so you can figure out nandita is facing the north so her shadow will be in the left so as you see in this image nandita shadow is in the left since they are facing back to back the same way uh, ravi will also be in the other direction in that case he is pointing or facing towards the south direction so this is how you need to crack and this is the thumb rule that you need to understand for cracking such questions and moving on to the next question so uh, this particular question comes under the verbal reasoning uh, so you need to match the definitions Uh, so basically what is given in this particular slide or the question is tie breaker so you must be familiar with what is a tie breaker so tie breaker actually means that the match is tie so both teams are scoring the same point so capturing that basic essence of this question or the meaning of what is tie breaker there are four different definitions that are given so you need to carefully read all those four definitions and figure out which uh, is more appropriate to the word tie breaker so for an instance on the first uh, option that is given 
it is said that at half time the scores are tied in a football match so usually a football match uh, will end at the end i mean in between they'll be having a half time so which is assumed that the match is still not over so we cannot classify or consider it as a tie breaker similarly in the second question you can see serena and maria have secured one set in a game so usually in a badminton or a tennis there will be multiple sets here it is just mentioned that it is a one set so you need to ignore it in the third question the umpire tosses a coin so tossing a coin never comes under a tie breaker so that also you need to eliminate so uh, here the trick what you need to understand so if you are given any mcq question the most ideal way of approaching it is using the elimination method which we often uh, say to our uh, students who are in our academy or coaching so elimination method you know what is not right even though if you don't know what is right you'll definitely know what is not right so keep eliminating the options in the end you will be left out with one or two options then you can wisely decide which is more appropriate so that is how you need to approach these sort of questions especially the mcq type of question the elimination method or elimination approach so if i eliminate all these three options the final left out option is the rcb kkr match which was finished at 140 all out so if you take a cricketing fraternity two teams scoring the same score is assumed as a tie breaker so cricketing fans might uh, crack this answer immediately but people who do not know anything about cricket or what is a tie breaker it might be a little bit tricky but it is a very easy question if you approach using the elimination method and rcb kkr that is the right answer and getting into the next question uh, so uh, under aesthetical sensitivity you will be studying a lot about elements of design principles of design and color theory so this particular question type is uh, from your uh, elements and principles of design so here you are given four different uh, visual features so it is asked that each of these uh, features will resemble or associate with a, a property of a design so you need to uh, pick the right series based on the four options that is given below even here what i strongly recommend is you choose the elimination method so as you see in the first image uh, there is a radial pattern which is very obvious so if you get into the coaching they'll be uh, explaining you uh, each and every component which is given here what is a, tressel, a translation symmetry asymmetric symmetric fractal these things i'm not uh, coaching you now i'm just giving you the approach methodology so once you are aware of these terminologies the very first instance you can figure out that it is a radial symmetry and rest of the things you can check in that particular option so only one option uh, what they have mentioned here is fitting your requirement the radial symmetry so slowly you can apply the other three words with the image which is given above so in that if you are not familiar with what is a tessellation or what is a fractal image the next option which is left out is the rotational repetition so you can figure out okay the first and second option compared to the other three options are fitting the series so blindly you can fig, uh, uh, like fix your answer or freeze it that that's the final answer so that is the way how the elimination method works so with the given time you need to consciously spend quality time for each question so you need you need not spend more time for a single question there will be left out with other questions unanswered in order to avoid such things please pick keywords from what you know or what you are familiar with rather than breaking your head to understand what are the other terminologies so again coming to an aesthetical sensitivity question based on color theory so such questions will also be asked so this was uh, actually asked in the first uh, nata test i believe so this comes under aesthetical sensitivity here you need not uh, i mean even though if you are not familiar with all these uh, components in color theory your intuitive approach will definitely work so here you need not apply your uh, elimination method rather you need to apply your intuitive method you know what is right based on your uh, basic understanding of color so usually blue uh, will have a very calm or soothing effect so it is nothing to deal with joy and optimism uh, and in the second option there are uh, vibrant colors so you can have that option aside and in the second color i mean a third option you have again blue and a mix of red so a warm color is there so warm colors might not uh, Uh, fit your emotion or mood of joy and optimism and similarly in the last option also there is a warm color uh, which is predominantly red in color so uh, the most appropriate or left out answer as you fixed earlier is the option b so here you have very dynamic or you know vibrant colors uh, with a mix match of both warm and cool colors so the mood or the emotion is actually reflecting joy and optimism so you can wisely pick based on your intuitive approach so even though if you are not familiar with terminologies or color theory you should be able to crack it or decipher it this way and coming to the next question 
which is again based on your color theory here you need to use the elimination method so here again there is a hue scale which is given uh, so hue of a red color uh, which is scaled down or toned down and uh, five different options are given p q r s and t so based on those sequence you need to understand which fits 4 6 and 7 so here as you see in that uh, hue scale 4 6 and 7 are very lighter tones so in the options p and s can be removed on the very first go that is the logic based on the elimination method or approach you need to immediately remove the p and s because they are not fitting your 4 6 7 because they are the bright colors so if you are removing p and s the left out option should be something between q r and t so if that is going to be the case then you need to check from the given options option b is well suiting the answer q r and t so that is the t q r based on this sequence the t q r option so if you move on to the next slide i have shown the option uh, so the third i mean the second option is the right answer because you have eliminated the p and s on the very first go so a option has p c option has p d option has s so we can remove it or eradicate it so that is how we can crack these sort of questions use the using the elimination method moving on to the next slide so the general observation these are typology of questions which are based on general observations so in if such questions are asked please make a note that only 30 seconds will be given and most of the people who attempted the first test they were like uh, we were not able to observe in the given 30 seconds but there is no other go only 30 seconds will be given and what you need to do what is the technique that we need to uh, uh, say you or uh, how to crack this easily is defragment this image and translate them into a verbal content so you, you are given a 30 second time frame and this image is there so anyways uh, at the time of writing your exam you will be given a paper and a pencil or a pen so using that paper Now, whatever you see in this image for the 30 second start making a note list down so uh, as you see in this particular image there are lot of peoples or characters involved uh, you can see a kite you can see different houses different trees animals so lot of things are happening so in the given 30 seconds quickly make a note making what all things you see in this particular image so probable questions that can come out of this question i am showing you now so uh, the question is after the 30 seconds the screen will immediately move to the next question that is the 31st second you will be asked a question how many benches are there in the park so at that time you cannot refer back to that uh, question here since i am showing you for a reference i am showing this question but rather what will actually be asked is just this question and the four options will be given you cannot go back to that answer rather if you have a very good observation you can recollect or based on the notes that you have took please refer that notes and try to uh, answer these sort of questions so in this particular uh, image what i am again showing you you can easily figure out that there are five benches that are available in the park you can count it at a later point of time i am not spending more time on these type of questions and the next question you can see where the five benches are located and in the next question they'll be asking how many old people were there in the park again you cannot go back to the image only this particular image and four options will be given and you can easily figure out that there are two elder people who are available in the park apart from these type of questions other possible questions from this particular image can be what is the color of the kite what is the type of roof was it a flat roof or or was it a pitch roof or uh, what is the uh, dog's collar made of so where is uh, was there any dollar that was hanging from the dog so these probable questions might also be asked apart from the two things i showed you now and moving on to the next question so this is again a observation ability and abstract reasoning question so you can see different types of tile patterns in this image what you see on the screen again 30 seconds will be given to you and the image will disappear it will not appear again as i mentioned in the previous question please make a note of these things in your paper so as you see immediately you can figure out how many uh, different types of patterns are seen in this composition in the very first go it will actually confuse you but stay focused don't get confused don't get panic or don't get worried please count the number of patterns that you see make a note of it and then uh, observe what uh, are the other things that they have composed is there any repetition or is there any pattern or sequence that they are showing so based on that you make a note of it so compared to the previous question 
the previous question was all about observing the character people and other details but in this particular question you need to just decode or decipher the pattern based on the tile design so uh, after you observe uh, the image will be uh, gone and the question will be asked so the next uh, slide what you see here is the question in the given tile pattern how many unique pieces of tiles were arranged so there are four different options so you would have already made a note of the number of patterns that you saw if you have failed to observe then this question you will be losing marks so that is why this is precisely coming under your observation ability and abstract reasoning so uh, the correct answer for this question is actually four so as you can see in the next slide i have just bifurcated all the patterns using a color theme so that it will be easy for you to decipher and as you see i have used four different colors representing four different tile patterns which are unique in the composition so uh, the four uh, if you mention four it is the right answer if you choose any other option you will lose marks and uh, fortunately uh, there is no negative marking in nata and moving on to the next slide the second question how many tiles appeared in pairs of two so again using the same composition the second question is that how many uh, patterns appear to be in pairs so again uh, you should have made a clean distinction of uh, where all you saw the repetition so based on that you should have made a note of it so in this particular composition again uh, if you would have noticed or observed there are three such pairs in the composition again i have uh, uh, used it or highlighted it using a color you can very well see that these are the pairs that are uh, actually uh, seen in the composition and moving on to the next component so as i mentioned you will be asked questions from physics and mathematics in the physics question this is a very simple logic so no rocket science so you are not asked anything to deal with uh, very complicated uh, aspects in physics it is a very simple straightforward question you just have to apply a logic what should be the minimum height of a plane mirror required to view the full image of a person who is 6 feet tall so there are four different options again uh, since it is a M mcq question so uh, when such a question is asked you just apply your brain or uh, whatever you know so uh, you need not have a 6 feet tall mirror to show a 6 feet tall image so that is the first logic that you need to understand so kindly remove the 6 feet option using the elimination method and uh, naturally 5 feet and 4 feet are also the next to next uh, series so rather uh, what you need to apply is whenever there is a mirror which is half the size of the actual subject it will be reflecting the actual image so the half of this is enough so if you are uh, trying to show a 6 feet tall man on a mirror a 3 feet tall mirror is very much sufficient so this is a basic knowledge so even if you have a mirror in your house it will be just half the size of what uh, the human proportion is so that is the basic logic that you need to apply a uh, half the size of a mirror can reflect a 6 foot tall man simple so this is how physics questions will be asked moving on to the next question the uh, again a general awareness based and a physics based question so what is the cause for twinkling of stars we all know that stars twinkle but uh, we some people will be aware that why the stars are twinkling based on some uh, solid uh, justification so there are again four options that are given to you and what you need to decipher here is whether it is because of a pollution reflection refraction or dispersion so you need to again refer to your previous basics so these are things which you have learned in your due course of your higher education or your schooling days so uh, it is basically because of the uh, dust particles which are in the uh, atmospheric level and because of the turbulence level the light from the stars will get refracted so because of that refraction the actual stars will uh, be uh, seen as twinkling but in reality stars never twinkle it is merely an optical illusion so that is what you need to understand so the answer for this question as you see in the next slide is the atmospheric refraction and this is the logic behind the answer so moving on to the next component uh, so having seen lot of mcqs with wide variety of topics uh to test your capability we are now slowly moving on into the msq type of questions so uh, what do you mean by msq is uh, so you will be given again uh, four choices of answer all answers will be right you need to mindfully pick what is the actual answer so in that case uh, multiple select questions uh, you need to be very conscious because a wrong answer uh, might uh, leave you a zero mark 
and the right answer will yield you uh, more marks so how this works i'll just uh, share it in the upcoming slides but before that uh, please be clear of what is an msq type of a question going on to the first type so the first question so under whatever, you have, whatever doubts you have you can ask in your comment section below and there is also a link where you can register if you have any doubts or uh, any other thing you can ask later so in the comment section you will have a link where you can register to know uh, more about architecture or nata yeah, yeah. Uh, so in the end of this session we have a very dedicated question hour for you so we will be clearing all your doubts if at all you have or else you keep uh, posting it in the comment box uh, we will be clearing it in the end of the session uh, so yeah uh, we will just uh, get back to the presentation so coming to the msq type of question the first question what you see is which of these options on the right uh, can be formed by folding the profile shown on the left so this is a logical reasoning question which will be categorized under non verbal reasoning so we saw a lot of questions under verbal reasoning but this particular image what you see here is a non verbal reasoning so what you need to do for such questions is don't panic don't get confused whatever paper is given to you at the time of examination use that paper similarly draw grids or try to fold based on what you uh, see in the screen so once you try using it using the paper that is given to you you will definitely have an idea so here components like elements of design principles color theory all these components will be there so you need to be very strengthened on these topics only if you are uh, strengthened on these topics you will be able to uh, relate to what is asked so in this question as you see uh, there are four options that are given and uh, the uh, second option what you see uh, i mean the second box as you see there are four options so option a as you see if you fold actually as i highlight uh, the red color what you see at the bottom it should not be a red color rather it should be a blue color so which is why option a is wrong uh, option b c and d seem to be the right answer because once you fold you will be getting that blue color and red color at the bottom yellow and red at the bottom from the other side red and yellow as you see in the option d on other side so the wrong answer here is option a so you should not pick answer a rather if you pick option b c and d you will get marks so the first uh, mark so the most correct answer will be given the uh, three marks the next adjacent uh, answer uh, most i mean the most accurate answer will be given the three marks and the nearest to accurate will be given two marks and the least accurate will be given one mark and the inaccurate answer will be awarded zero marks so which is what you see in the next slide the answer which i have highlighted so option a if you choose you will get zero marks and if you choose option c d and b you will be awarded equal marks 3 2 and 1 so getting to the next question so the next question uh, as you see uh, you have uh, two dimensional black and white composition as you see here uh, uh, sorry i'll i'll just stand corrected the msq type of questions is not necessary that you will be given 3 2 and 1 marks so that is all about your ptq i'll stand corrected sorry so that i'll discuss it in the coming slides for the msq a uh, multiple select questions uh, you need to select multiple answers which are uh, actually required so for instance if you see in this particular question uh, there are two most important visual principles that are uh, available in the two dimensional composition so there are like uh, n number of options that are given to you for these types of questions you need to be familiar with the principles and elements of design so as you see here only two most uh, actual uh, you know emphasizing principles are asked so in this as you see in the center uh, you have a trapezoidal uh, point which acts as a focal point and uh, something uh, that you see in the composition is the repetition of different shapes a trapezoid a parallelogram or a uh, wavy pattern an organic pattern and there are a lot of geometric patterns so the repetition is actually seen most appropriate so in this particular question the right answer would be Uh, out of all these things focal point and repetition so these two things if you choose that will be the right answer and uh, the next uh, question if you move on to the third question again a similar composition is given which is a metal sculpture three dimensional in nature again a list of topics is given 10 different options are given out of which you need to pick at least uh, five most important visual design elements so in this list you need to pick only five 
again i will tell you all the answers which are given here are right but you are asked to pick the most appropriate or important five things so you need to pick only five things rather uh, how you need to approach this question is you need to give weightage so if you see the answer for this question uh, first you can say uh, instead of hierarchy uh, it is actually balanced so you can pick that as your first option and the third option dynamism yes absolutely and option d unstable if you pick unstable already you, you have uh, picked balance so it will be contradictory so you remove uh, i mean you eradicate or eliminate unstable delicateness yes because it is supporting with a very feeble support so delicateness it is uh, having some direction yes it has a form because it is a 3d object and distortion so distortion is the uh, next level of classifying it so if you choose all these three options the five answers if you see the next slide i have highlighted the answers balance dynamism delicateness direction and form that will be your right answer so this is how the multiple select questions will be asked so out of all the answers that are given all answers are right but you need to pick only the most appropriate answer that you have asked so in the previous image or previous question we were uh, supposed to pick only two we picked it but the all other answers mentioned were right similarly here all answers are right we are only asked to pick five important things and if you move on to the next question again so these are some sort of questions based on your architectural aptitude so this plan which is a meenakshi amman temple plan and in this plan there are lot of elements that are described so all the elements of the building which are explained here are all correct but you need to understand or uh, you know uh, crack the question in what way they have asked you here only they have asked about the three most important elements that define the enclosure so this word enclosure defines what all the parameters that you need to uh, pick from this exhaustive list so here as you see gopurams it forms a enclosure uh, vimanas will not actually form and it is not very important mandapas is actually it forms and these elements if you are not familiar with the terminologies you need to uh, you know uh, enroll for a coaching so they'll be teaching you how these different terminologies are a part of your design and only then you'll acquire this knowledge on the very first go you'll definitely not understand it'll be a greek and latin but for this particular session we are not getting into the nitty gritties of the explanations rather we are just trying to approach on what basis we need to crack these questions so as i mentioned the enclosure word is more important that you need to identify and uh, tanks is not an enclosure stamba is not an enclosure prakaram yes it forms an enclosure bazar it no it is not very important kalasas is also not very important so the right answer so you are only asked to pick uh, uh, three different things so the three different things will be gopuram mandapas and uh, prakarams so that is your right answer so this is how multiple select questions will work and coming to the last question under msq again a similar architectural uh, aptitude kind of a question uh, jawahar kala kendra plan is given here and in that they have asked you to pick three most important spatial planning and visual principles so principles of design in the visual context of this particular plan so here again you need to only pick three important things so the first thing is mandala yes it is a very uh, highlighting thing so based on a 9 by i mean uh, the grid nine mandalas are there so mandala will be a, uh, important or a crucial component so you can fix it distortion is not very important kund yes it forms the central uh, water body so kund is uh, actually a very spatial planning and visually uh, appealing uh, element you can pick that up symbolism yes absolutely it is symbolizing mandala you can pick it up maze is not actually uh, very highlighting illusions no never bazaar no never ponds so uh, instead of a pond a kund is the most appropriate word so in this question uh, uh, like the way how i uh, deciphered you need to just relate which is more important and which is defining the spatial planning so the answer would be mandala kund and symbolism as you see in the next slide so with this we are ending the msq type of questions and we are moving on to the naq type of questions so naq is nothing but numerical answer type questions where you will not be given any options it is merely a fill in the blanks type of a question so as you saw in the previous typologies none of the answers will be displayed it is based on your understanding it is a answer type question which is like a typical fill in fill in the blanks so moving on to the first question under your naq types as you see in this particular image you are shown a series of squares which are composed 
so the question is how many total squares can you find in the image that's the question so for this type of question what you need to do is again please make a note of your uh, i mean please utilize the paper that is given to you so quickly draw this image on your paper and the right approach for these types of question is uh, use uh, i mean you need to count uh, how many squares are there but it, before you count you need to use the grid so grid is the right uh, approach to uh, you know uh, decode or decipher uh, this entire square which has a series of squares in it so uh, as you see there are two uh, big squares inside uh, i mean in the middle and it is enclosed by a bigger square and inside that bigger square you have series of smaller squares so if you are going to crack this answer so if you go to the next slide i have uh, easily explained you how to crack this if you see the answer so i have highlighted it using colors so that it will be easy so the number of squares or it can also be a question like number of triangles but here we are seeing the squares so first you count it using the grids so use the paper work in layers so if, if what i mean to say work by layers is if you see uh, there are like six different squares i have bifurcated based on the overall square that was given to you if i am going to separate them into grids the first grid is the 4 by 4 grid which i have highlighted in the green color and that is just one component so you can count it as one and in the next grid is the 3 by 3 grid and i have used three different colors the blue yellow and the green so there are like uh, and the green color i mean there are four different colors there are four such 3 by 3 grids and the 2 by 2 grids i have highlighted using two different colors there are nine such boxes and one by one grid the overall square which has 16 uh, different squares inside and a big middle square where are, there are two which is highlighted in green and a small middle square which are eight in number if you still bifurcate the big middle squares so in this way you get a tentative list of the count so if you are summing all these different counts based on the grids or layers it will sum up to number 40 so the right answer for this question is just the number 40 but this is just a work about how to uh, arrive to this answer i have just given all these explanations it is not necessary for you to uh, work out entire thing but this is the right approach how to crack it so few people if you are very good in observation you can directly um, uh, decipher it based on your understanding but this will be the easiest way to decode it at the given time and the right answer is 40 you need to enter as 40 no options will be given to you and coming to the next question moving on it is a non verbal type of a question again here you can see a series of triangles that are stacked and uh, that is the image which is given to you and the question that will be asked to you is count the number of stacked triangle pieces the same approach what i taught you in the previous question please use your uh, counting so uh, if you move on to the next slide i have just uh, shown you how to work out for this uh, particular question so from your top you need to understand how many shapes are there so in the very top you just have only one shape here you need to understand or have an idea about the three dimensional aspect of this composition so in the uh, top surface you have only one triangle slowly if you keep moving towards the bottom in the second layer as i mentioned please work in layers in the second layer you will be having from the top i am just explaining now you will be having two things and in the third layer you will be having four things so it slowly gets uh, increasing or rather if you are going to move from the bottom then that is also easy you have three surfaces it's a triangle obviously you have nine so slowly in the top surface also there is nine and if you are going to keep progressing upwards you can minus one each of the uh, shapes that are missing that will also give you a holistic idea so if you are comfortable dealing from bottom to top or top to bottom it's up to you but the counting in layers is more important again if once you have all these numbers in a separate way you sum up and that sum will give you the answer so here we have 46 as the answer as i mentioned you so you need to enter 46 to get the right answer so moving on to the next question uh there is a this is a drawing aptitude which is a perspective so 1.2 point 3 point perspectives you need to be familiar what it is and this particular question the question is which cylinder is higher or taller so as you see a few people who don't have patient patience or not patient enough they'll immediately say that other uh, right hand side square is the most uh, tallest but unfortunately Uh, both these images are in illusion because of the perspective if you see this in the true scale the objects are actually in the same level 
so that i have explained you in the next image if you see the answer i have uh, shown you using grids so actually both of them are in the same line or in the same uh, height so uh, because of the perspective and the illusion it is in the different uh, angles or in the different side they appeal to be so even if you see your vehicles in the two wheelers it will be mentioned right objects in the mirror looks closer than they appear it's the same principle what we have applied here also the answer should be the same you should not pick any of these two different options that will become wrong so moving on to the next question it is a verbal aptitude question which is a riddle so riddle and puzzles will also be a part of your test so here it is a very simple at a little bit tricky question so there are five sisters in the room each are doing different activities but only four people's activities are mentioned there as you see anu is reading a book madhavi is cooking kavita is playing chess and meenu is doing a laundry so the fifth sister uh, they have not mentioned what activity she is doing but based on this activity analysis and based on your verbal aptitude you need to figure out what the fifth sister is doing so uh, you need to mindfully uh, uh, you know understand what each of these activities are so uh, the thing what you need to decipher here is uh reading a book is a uh, activity which can be done alone cooking can also be done alone but playing a chess can never be done alone so what you need to understand from the logic or aptitude is uh, uh, the fifth sister is actually playing chess with kavita so that should be the right answer if you move on to the next slide you can see the answer so the uh, fifth sister is playing chess with kavita so we are not concerned about what her name is but what she is doing we need to understand so this is the right answer so you need to understand you need not uh, panic what what might be the case don't complicate just read the activity and based on your activity analyze that is the verbal aptitude moving on to the next question again there is a image which is given to you what you need to do is locate the hidden umbrella and identify the segment in which it is located so the segment is given in the form of a grid so in the horizontal way alphabetical grid is given and in the vertical way numerical grids are given so you need to pick the answer saying whether it is a2 so a uh, column and uh, one row two row or a c column and one row and so on whatever it is you need to figure out so in these types of questions it will actually consume a lot of time so you need to be very uh, careful in spending time so at a very uh, short time you need to decipher where the umbrella is hidden so it will be a, a repetition or a illusion or a riddle based question so you need to be open enough for observing the eye on detailing is very much essential for these types of question so wherever you see there are a lot of uh, these uh, black patches so umbrella uh, might be uh, somewhere uh, hidden in the corner or at the center it might be anywhere but what you need to understand so if you uh, see the answer if you move on to the next slide i have highlighted it so it is a folded umbrella so uh, they have not mentioned whether it is a open umbrella or a closed umbrella it is just mentioned that the out of this whole segment a uh, umbrella is hidden so always people have a preconceived notion that umbrella will be wide open so they'll be looking their eyes very wide open and searching where is the open umbrella but what they have given here is a closed umbrella so this is a kind of a riddle uh, why they are asking such questions is to just test your observations skills how uh, open enough your how the ion detailing is there so as you rightly see in the composition you need to pick that it is in the c grid and in the third grid Uh, as per the composition which is given here so c3 will be your right answer this is how you need to answer such questions now moving on to the next component so this is the ptq type of a question so this is where earlier i mentioned you right accurate answer will be carrying 3 marks the closest to accurate will be uh, given 2 marks and the least accurate will be given 1 mark and the inaccurate will be 0 marks so based on uh, ptq type questions you will be given various options out of which you will be asked to uh, pick the most appropriate answer and the marking will also be varying based on the appropriate level so moving on to the first question under ptq preferential type question here is a image which is given to you and it should you should just find the number of matches that are given in the picture four different options are given and each uh, option has different marks and as you see in this image there is a cigar lighter and the match sticks are laying uh, i mean lying across around it and uh, very obviously there are five different match sticks that are aside and a few of them are in reflection and few match sticks are behind the 
uh, cigar lighter so uh, few people they fumble up uh, on seeing this they get uh, carried away so because they are running short of time they might be very enthusiastic or worried to answer this immediately without even thinking so 90% of the people pick 10 as the answer because five you see in the front and five you see in the reflection so people might uh, pre uh, conceive or assume and pick the number 10 but the right answer here if you move on to the next slide i have mentioned it what is the right answer so number of sticks is 8 so as you see uh, there are five match sticks that are in the front lying separately and uh, three of it are lying at the back of the cigar lighter and uh, rest of the things are all reflections based on the object that is in the front so 5 plus 3 5 in the front 3 in the back they are all uh, the actual uh, match sticks that are lying so uh, number 8 if you pick you will get 3 marks if you pick 7 which is the closest you will get 2 marks and if you choose 6 which is the least accurate you will get 1 mark but if you choose 10 you will get 0 marks so this is how ptq type of questions will be working so pay attention to the objects so uh, which is the reflection which is the actual object those things you need to mindfully pick it up and uh, moving on to the next question in ptq again a similar image will be given you will be asked to count the number of horses in this particular question so again this is not a rocket science we have been playing uh, these sort of uh, uh, find the differences kind of questions you know since childhood days and all these time pass games have uh, literally developed our ability in one way or the other so this is not a new type of question to you you need to just pay attention on not only seeing the obvious horses but also uh, on seeing uh, you know uh, details on surroundings or the context like in this case uh, if you see the cloud the sky the thunderstorm the mountains the grasses the bark of the trees mountains the lot of elements in each element there will definitely be a hidden horse so if you see the next slide i have just uh, circled it for your understanding so all these circled portions form the uh, image of a horse so it need not be a very obvious image it can be an abstract also so you need to uh, be aware of what is an abstract reasoning what is an abstract so these kind of things you need to be familiar with so here the right answer is actually 16 i have highlighted all the 16 horses similarly the 16 if you choose the d option it will be 3 marks c you will get uh, 2 marks and one i mean b you will get one mark and if you choose a you will get no mark and moving on to the next question again a similar portrait where a tiger is given the same logic which i said for your previous question for the horses you need to apply it here also so apart from your obvious options please have a look at the abstract uh, possibilities in the uh, context or environment which is given in the uh, rear side of these obvious images so if you see the answer in the next slide you can figure out there are like almost uh, 16 uh, tigers that you can figure out the marking pattern is also in the same way i'm not spending more time on these repeated uh, questions if you go to the next question again uh, spot the differences you would have very well uh, attempted these kind of uh, puzzles or riddles in your newspaper like the sudoku so similarly here also you need to find the differences so there might be n number of differences but if you see the answer as i have highlighted there are only 10 maximum options so if you pick 10 you will get the first mark that is 3 marks and similarly the next two options if you pick adjacently you will get the rest of the mark so i am again uh, skipping this question immediately we are running short of time and uh, the next question again you need to spot the differences which are very subtle so i uh, will uh, tend to spend more time on these questions but please don't spend it will be very easy so please make a note of the things that you already figured out so again if you choose one thing if you forget and again referring back that will consume more time so always please make a note of it once if you find it tally that with the options that are given to you so here in this option if you see the next slide you will see that uh, option 5 if you choose you will get uh, uh three mark uh, i mean uh, yeah three marks if you choose option 2 you'll get uh, uh two marks if you choose option 3 you'll get one mark and that is how these type of questions will work so that's the end of your ptq type of questions and we are moving on to the tips and tricks so which i already mentioned you so we have seen a very vast area of topics and typology of questions so based on these things i am now going to brief you about the tips and tricks so if you move on to the slide i just uh, Uh, listed down what is the approach methodology to answer uh, these type of questions this is very much specific to your nata uh, so uh, first thing is the direct approach 
so this how it works is based on your preparation and the confidence level so people who have prepared uh, using the support of coaching academies or using any books or literatures and you are very uh, clear on the subjects and topics and uh, contents of what is the syllabus demanding you then based on such a preparation and confidence level you can directly answer those questions without even thinking of what is the logic the second thing is the elimination method which i often uh, insisted during the mcq type of question so you don't know the answer you don't have the awareness but you definitely know what is not right so based on that uh, what is not right please eliminate the options and then with the left out option pick the right choice that will in turn literally save your time that you spend for your question and the next thing is the pragmatic approach which is very practical and logical so even if you don't know if you apply some sort of a logic the presence of mind based on that you can approach such questions and the last option is the random choice so there will be uh, certain questions maybe from uh, physics or a math or a, a architectural aptitude which you are not at all familiar with but you also don't want to skip that question because that is not carrying any negative mark it is better to uh, attempt such questions if at all if you are lucky enough you will get a, a right answer you will get more marks so you have some sort of an intuition you have a feeling a strong feeling that it might be the right answer so that might work out right for you so that is a intuitive approach so these are four different approaches by which you can tackle all these four typologies of questions which we discussed the msqs the mcqs the ptqs and the naqs so this is very specific which we uh, expose our uh, students in our academy so you can also adapt these strategies and approach methodologies moving on to the next slide this is little bit generic Uh, but still uh, we uh, entertain our students to follow these uh, strategies so the first thing is the smart goal so you are fixing what you need to learn uh, what you need to understand so uh, based on these parameters specific measurable achievable achievable realistic and time bound uh, strategies you need to fix your goals of how how do you intend to prepare this syllabus and the next thing is completely understanding each and every component of your syllabus so just like that if you have a overview of the syllabus that is not uh, sufficient for you you need to uh, you know critically analyze what are all the sub components as well as i mentioned in the previous slides and you should give equal importance to all the topics so some people might not at all be interested in uh, uh, numerical reasoning some people will uh, always try to you know omit even in your high school learning uh, will omit uh, choices right you will learn organic chemistry you'll skip inorganic chemistry so that you cannot do here because the weightage is given uh, for all components so if you're skipping one particular component if you're aiming or aspiring to score more marks this will definitely not help you so please give equal importance to all the topics and understand the logic behind each and every question or a problem which is uh, shown to you so by preparing or attempting a lot of mock tests you will definitely get the a logic because over each and every question there will definitely be a series or a pattern which it is following that is the way how you can decipher or decode the logic behind that and then please practice consistently so some people they'll be preparing only in the last 10 days of your exam and some people they'll prepare one month before but at the uh, nearing of the exam they'll not prepare the consistency plays a major role every day please spend equal time to focus on different topics and keep track of your timing this is a very essential thing so uh, most of the people uh, attempting uh, these sort of questions uh, they'll be uh, you know uh, overwhelmed to attempt all the questions so few people they'll just uh, quickly answer all the questions since it is an mcq without even thinking what is the right answer they'll be completing their exam well before the given time of 180 minutes few people they'll spend more time on uh, different questions failing to meet up or uh, attempt all the questions so they'll be forced to do, you know end their exam without even completing so please keep a track of your timing both at the time of examination and also at the time of your preparation so that's the end of the session and uh, just a quick uh, 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 like uh, information about who we are i'll just spend five more minutes so uh, we are ccq academy from coimbatore and uh, we offer an extensive coaching for all architecture fashion and technology related courses all design courses in short so we offer merit based scholarship for all potential candidates and we give 100% result oriented coaching so so far we have placed lot of people in you know uh, manipal university pearl academy with high scores and we have a very eminent faculty team from you know reputed institutions across the country like except uh school of architecture planning etc and we have our own exclusive learning app so from wherever you are you can attempt your uh, mock test you can access our study materials and on the next slide you can see we have, we pay individual attention to all students we have an expert study materials prepared by our own team of academicians and we have a lot of regular practice and mock test series and a one to one doubt clearing session 
so moving on uh, this is our team so in the next slide you can see uh, our core team so uh, this is our team specialized in various fields of architecture and the common thing is all uh, uh, all of us are you know long term academicians and uh, we uh, start uh, we started this academy with the vision that uh, we uh, have to cater you know for an architect uh, by the architect and to create the future architect so that was our vision uh, why we you know joined together and in the next slide you can see our uh, ex you know the extended version of our team so we have uh, architect uh, rajkumar architect uh, kalevendan i mean uh, rajkumar is an artist and kalevendan uh, tamilvanan uh, and uh, anushnath so we are all uh, architects and we have an exclusive aptitude trainer so with this uh, we are ending uh, the session and i have a uh, the crux of the entire session lies in this slide what you are seeing now so if you move on uh, there is a square which i have given you so in this square uh, the message i need to communicate based on the entire discussion what we discuss so we saw many questions which appeal to be burning to our minds but originally they are not not at all uh, not all that uh, we see are burning so finally uh, it is completely a result proven approach of what you see here so uh, look at the diagram carefully and uh, now i'll ask you four questions about this square so i hope you are ready the first question uh, as you move on to the next slide the first question is divide the white area in the square a into two equal pieces so the, it is a very easy question so if you move on to the next slide you can see how we can divide that into two different i mean two equal pieces similarly i am asking you the next question divide the white area in the square b into three equal pieces it is also not so difficult if you move on to the next slide you can see how b is divided similarly the third option the third question is divide the white area in square c into four equal pieces so based on the a and b pattern you will also crack the c pattern if you move on to the next slide you can see but be ready here comes the last question the now you need to divide the white area in square d into seven equal pieces and the world record for this question is 7 seconds only so if you have cracked it in 7 seconds move on to the next slide you will see the answer but if you did not get the answer it was just that your mind was conditioned to seek a complex solution based on the first uh, a b and c parameters your mind was conditioned that it might be something complicated but this is the most easiest way to approach and this is the answer so if you move on to the next slide to sum up what all we saw what we need to convey out of this uh, session is uh, most of the times we get very much accustomed to situations that we'll fail to see the obvious thing uh, for example if you go to a doctor and say uh, you started with a headache the diagnosis starts with migraine and then slowly it keeps escalating and we assume a lot of things and we get you know uh, we make things complicated which is actually easy and then get trapped with some ghost thoughts so same thing is the case with our relationships also so keeping all these things in mind please never complicate so the burning questions what you see is only burning for you but it is not actually burning it is the approach or the way how you are seeing so what i uh, want to uh, communicate is be simple in life life the greatness of humans was just their simplicity so uh, declutter all uh, your distractions and lessen them and quit trying to be very perfect so coming to the next slide what i mean to say is keep it simple stupid don't complicate and with this i am ending it and we are open now for the question hour and uh, best wishes for your upcoming nata 2021 second test which is tentatively scheduled in the month of july and uh, if you want any further coaching and uh, support our learning app is always available in play store and you can contact us in any of the mediums and uh, thank you all and uh, especially mam school of architecture for this great opportunity hope all of you had a very refreshing evening session over to you architect pravatika thank you so much sir for your uh, tips and tricks on nata and the questions that you discussed as well i uh, hope this was useful for all of the students who are seeing us and uh, thank you for uh, spending your valuable hours with us yeah thank you sir uh, we have our link uh, posted in the comment section uh, you can register to ask if you have any queries and questions about nata or our uh, architecture uh, thank you and signing off this evening yeah thank you so much thank you